When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and a sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with faith in your heart, and you never walk alone. Walk on, walk on, with faith in your heart, and you never walk alone. You'll hallelujah we welcome you today to the Coppite church i'm telling you that by him jesus christ were all things created including our football club and so we give jesus the praise that we have a club which is all heart all passion all compassion that has been through so much over the last years. You know, I've stood on Leppings Lane, Hillsborough, in years gone by. I know personally how tight that enclosure was and the suffering of the families of the 96. And we pray for them to this day. And our pleas that God has ordained online there to be a Coppite church, which is full of heart, full of compassion, and full of love. You know, it's a joy to us that we in the Coppite church have a brother in Christ Roberto Firmino, seen here being baptized in water, identifying with Jesus Christ. A man, one of the greatest footballers in the world, who has come from a very humble background. This is his home village. And we give Jesus the praise and all the glory that we have a club of all hearts. You know, we understand in our club there are players of different faiths. And hearing this week of Sadio Mane, so concerned about his own country, sending huge resources in the light of the coronavirus. You know something? We're giving Jesus the praise and all the glory for what is a very special football club. And we don't despise or hate other clubs. We love them. We bless them. And we pray for fairness and honesty in games. That we should win the Premier League at every trophy we, we go in for, but honestly and fairly. And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this Coppite church now starts to grow with the men, women, and children supporting this club and other football teams too should get to know our Creator. For by Him, Jesus Christ, were all things created. And Lindsay, my wife, born in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Kenny is going to sing the lovely song, T Too Much to Gain to Lose.
too many miles behind me too many trials are through too many tears that help me to remember there's too much to gain to lose too many sunsets lie behind the mountain too many rivers my feet have walked through too many treasures yonder and there's too much to gain to lose I've crossed the hot burning desert I was struggling Right road to choose, but somewhere up ahead, there's cool, clear water, and defeat is one word I never use. To Too many rivers my feet have walked through. Too many treasures are waiting over yonder. And there's too much to gain to lose. Too many treasures. Lindsay, you go ahead and tell us of your first visit to Anfield. Oh, I will. <laughs> okay, I, I come from a, I'm a country girl, kind of, although I was born in Glasgow, ended up in the country, and I'm Scottish. But my experience, to be honest, had all been such as there was of it with rugby and, st and things, and I knew nothing about Liverpool Football Club. Well, I was in for a rude awakening, because when Dave and I got married in 1985... It was actually not long after the Heisel disaster, and he was showing me videos of this, and he was insisting that the fans had been set up, you know, and, and, and it was terrible. Well, uh, this is the first time I knew, you know, I, I was fooled by the media reports. I thought, oh gosh, you know, I'm not going to Liverpool football match, and there's all these wild, drunken fans, and I'm really sorry now. That was, I'm so sorry, I apologise to all of you, that like so many other people have been taken in by the media, and you know that most of the media, especially a certain newspaper, where are, um, are, are just evil, and they misreport everything. So anyway, I went with Dave, uh, you know, quite early, about a year later or a couple of years later. So that would be 1986, 87 sort of era. And I went with him to Anfield. And you know what? I was amazed. I was enthralled in that's only word I can use. Uh, gobsmacked in ordinary language. I just couldn't believe it. It was like going to church, only much better. <laughs> Because there were families there, whole families, and even little old ladies wearing hats, and just everybody. And the atmosphere was just wonderful. And, you know, I'm so, so glad that I met David because I was, <laughs> and I went to Anfield, and I now know a lot more about what it's all about. And it's a wonderful club, and you're wonderful people, and, you know, wonderful fans. That's it. <laughs> you know, Lindsay. In many respects, my experience of church and Anfield, have we got a lobsided camera here? Let's just put <laughs> this camera right. <laughs> Amen. 
Yeah. We're not some, lopsided, some, don't worry. Some Evertonian is being out of camera. I'm glad it's the camera and not us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lindsay, I was brought up on the Spy and Cop in the 60s, not quite the 50s. I think in the 50s, they actually went on what was called the paddock, which is sort of like a learning school for going on the cop in those days. But in the 60s and 70s, I was almost a forever present at home and away games. And I felt a love on the cop, a caring for each other that we've not experienced in church life. That's right. And it is something we're getting over in the Coppite church that instead of the church being so grand, having to teach the Coppites something, I believe the Coppites have got a lot to mm. teach to the church. And this whole Coppite church is all about that. I'll tell you, I had a prophecy, Lindsay, from the Lord. Yeah, I've seen on it. On the too. 2nd of mm. May, 2019. Mm. And this has come to pass for the first time today. It says, I've called thee to form this ministry, the Coppite Church, to touch thousands and thousands of souls all over the world who follow Liverpool Football Club. These are supporters who have gone through the horrors of Hillsborough and Heysel, many of whom have seen firsthand the narrow margin between life mm. and death. These supporters would die for the club, yet we find most Christians in churches are not prepared to die for the Christ. Mm. Now, this does not mean I do not love supporters of other clubs. So those of you who support Celtic Rangers up here, Stranra, uh, Inverness, Caledonian, Thistle, Tranmere Rovers, Accrington, Stanley, need not worry. God loves you too. Far from it, for I came into the world to give my life for all sinners. But this is a ministry, particularly to a club, that looks to applaud players from all sides. Mm. You know, Lindsay, for years, and it still goes on today, there's a YouTube video about it. It's called, Why Do Liverpool Supporters Always Applaud Opposition Goalkeepers? Ah. And it's a history which goes back, I think, to the Gordon Banks era, the wonderful England goalkeeper. Mm. And they, he used to play blinders against Liverpool. Leicester City, who he played for, used to become Liverpool's bogey side because of Gordon Banks used to save him from every quarter. It was just unbelievable. A little bit like Jan Oblak in a in recent match. Uh, against Atletico Madrid. I mean, mm. he just used to play these. And, and then Leicester used to always win 1-0. And they, and they were known as the bogey side. And it was all because of Gordon Banks. But instead of hating Gordon Banks for doing all this great work, he used to be applauded and cheered. Yeah, That's what football supporting is all about. Mm. You, If you see good play from another side, you applaud it. And that's what Liverpool supporters do. This is why this is a ministry, particularly to a club that looks to applaud players from all sides, that looks to love one's neighbour. Bill Kenwright's speech, who Everton chairman, at a Hillsborough service confirming this, also a club that, although a very competitive, looks to bless rather than mm. curse. You know, the people of Liverpool have got a lot to give. You come born in Glasgow. There's love between Liverpool and Everton. That. As there needs to be between Celtic and Rangers. Yeah, we still have a huge sectarian problem. Look, mm. that's no that's good. good. The Liverpool people, um, they go to the Liverpool Everton games together. Mm -hmm. In the same families there are. There isn't the hatreds. There's the banter. There's the humour. But that's a different thing to the hatreds. Its supporters know about landmarks, holding up banners of Shankly and Paisley, and also, incidentally, Rafa Benitez, who played a great role in the Hillsborough disaster. Mm. 
in support for the victims' families. Recognizing the role they played in setting forth foundations for the clubber today. The Bible says, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. We have found the support of this club key to landmarks mm -hmm. far more than Christian movements. And Christian movements have got a lot to learn mm -hmm. from the supporters of Liverpool Football Club who hold up in reverence the founders, the pioneers of the past. Mm -hmm. Give me a moment to blow me nose. Don't worry, it's not the coronavirus. <laughs> it's because I'm crying. Because these supporters, Lindsay, have got so much to give. I, I know, I know. So much to give. And, and, and they're, they're, I, they're the greatest, most compassionate people. Mm. We found church in Britain so hard. Yet I remember standing on the cop in those days, Lindsay, when it was standing. And the, you know the big sway you see on the pictures? Yeah. That used to be when the lads used to come out of the Albert pub and then crush their way through to the middle. And then they had nowhere to go to the toilet, so they, 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 they'd wee. And, and because a big gap would form once they were weeing, and the waterfall would come down. And, and, yeah. and, and then the crush would go down as someone was having a wee. It's so funny. And we used to know to stand in front of the crush barriers. The novice would stand. And when I say in front, I mean have the crush barrier at the back of you. The novice would have the crush barrier at the front because then all the crush comes down <laughs> and then you get it full belt. Um, but what we used to do, those people hurt, we used to put the guys and girls sometimes because girls used to go on the cop as well and they, they still do. Because uh, there's not been this male female divide at Liverpool. No, I noticed like that. Like we yeah. see in churches. You know, both the girls are allowed to sing and shout just like the lads are. And some of them can shout louder than the lads, especially Scouse women. I'm telling you, they're almost like Glasgow women. Terrifying, but never mind. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> the prophecy continues. They do not put aside the past as the emerging church does. Instead, understands the importance of history, not looking to remove foundations as the emerging church. It's a special club in times past, having had a Christian history, Lindsay. Like Everton, which the Copite Church will restore. You know, it was, a, it was like a Sunday school side in the early days. Uh, and of course, at Everton, it's the only ground, I think, in the country. It has an Anglican church in one corner really? of the ground. Yes, it does. My oh. God, they need this. Oh, no, that's the panzer. Oh. <laughs> okay. The phenomenal enthusiasm, the prophecy continues, as we approach the day of Jesus' return. God intends mm. to use for his glory. As Copites all over the world come to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lindsay, we used to sing a song on the cop which used to end up into glory we will go. Oh wow. You know the one about the poor scouser Tommy who went far away from his home. Fight for his king and his country. It's interesting, Lindsay, that the poor scouser Tommy was put in a Scottish division. Yeah. The Highland Division. <laughs> and a huge soldiers. link. Between, we, we live streaming this from Scotland. There's a huge link between Scotland. It's not just with Kenny, yeah. but from a man from Auchinleck, which is not far from here. Who came from Auchinleck, Lindsay? The great Shankly. <laughs> That's right. Uh, which is a humble village in Ayrshire. It's not far just away. Just north from, from here. here. Boy, did he, and he said, football's not a matter of life and death. It's more important than that. He was he a was great, great guy. My goodness, he, well, did he care? He, I met him on one occasion, Lindsay, and he was so humble. He wouldn't talk about himself. He would only talk about the players. I wish I'd met him. I, would, I, I wouldn't have tapped my handset down sorry, there. Else you'd be lo losing your reception. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yo, all right. Uh, let you run then, Lindsay. <laughs> she, she's like the old copites. So I don't know whether she's been to the Albert, but she needs the toilet. <laughs> 
It's a special club. In times past, having had a Christian history like Abbas, which the Coppite Church will restore, so says the prophecy. Oh, Lord, we praise you and give you glory. You know, the song, when you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. Don't be afraid of the dark. Just excuse me, watch I blow my nose. I'm so crying with the joy of bringing this. Oh, it's not the virus. It's because I'm crying. Don't be afraid of the dark. It's our message for today. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark. You know, this song is a message for society today. Don't be afraid of the dark. So many people are afraid today. You know, my experience of living many years in Liverpool and standing on the cop with all the lads and some girls as well, was that when adversity came, we took it on together. We were united. I remember being at one football match between Liverpool and Everton. And we were losing with 10 minutes to go, 2 now. And a great cry came up from the spy and cop. No surrender. And there was a roar around the ground. We were losing 2-0. The Evertonians were singing their victory song. They thought it was all over. But there's something about the spy and cop that when everything was down, there was a cry of no surrender. Something miraculous was about to happen. And one went in to make it 2-1. Another went in to make it 2-0. And I think, in fact, I remember it was Steve Highway playing a great match down the wing. And the winning goal came, it went in. And the cop, and I was right in the middle of it, went absolutely wild. There's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark. That we're caught in, in adversity in a nation which is suffering at this time. There's no football. Lads, there's no pubs. There's no nothing. <laughs> but we have this Coppite church going out with a great message. Don't be afraid of the dark. That we're to walk on through the storm. There's an old Christian song. About the storms and through the storms of life. And not being afraid of the storms. And this song is just the same. Walk on through the wind. Walk on through the rain. Though your dreams be tossed and blown. And we just forgive us. Change hope to faith. Now the Bible tells us faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That I saw this to a degree on the spying cup. That something started to build up in the cup when everything was against us. And it's been often said that the cup is the twelfth man. And the team cannot operate without this twelfth man. That the team, even today, great players though they are, get stirred up when the twelfth man gets stirred up. Such as it is with Christ. He cannot manage without us. That's why he calls us to give our lives to him. You know, those of us who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, like some Liverpool players, they have learned to know that we ourselves are the empty vessel, that Christ comes to live inside of us. You know, the Bible says we're not our own, we're bought with a price. 
You know, Copites sacrificed many thousands of pounds to go all over the world to follow their team. And it's an example. You see, Christ gave his life for us. He died on the cross that we can become Christians. You know, without Christ Jesus, there would be no Liverpool Football Club. We need to give him the praise and all the glory. The players would not be able to learn the skills to practice, to be able to come as one unit together on that great ground Anfield and all over the world. What a joy it was to see Liverpool becoming world and European champions. And undoubtedly Premier League champions. But to be champions we've got to be together. And if Jesus is going to reach every creature with the gospel. We need to be together with the one who created. By all things the Bible says. By all, let me bring it out now. Let me just quote. This is the true word of God. The authorized King James Bible and we read such anointed words here look what it says about our Jesus who hath delivered us from the power of darkness look what the song says don't be afraid of the dark he hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son he is before all things. By him all things consist. For by him were all things created. That are in heaven, in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. So the Bible says our football club was created for him. Which is why we are called as our scroll says he always get it the wrong way around. Where is the scroll? My point is to it. Yeah, there it is, our scroll. It's talking of the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew 5. That we love our enemies. We bless those who curse us. Our whole ethos is the bless. You know, I'm so reminded of the songs we used to sing. We're not looking to have the cop being a bunch of religious freaks. That would freak me out no end. We used to sing songs like, those were the days, my friend. We took the Stratford End. We took the Shed, the North Bank Highbury. We took the Geordies too. We fought for Liverpool. We are the cop of Liverpool FC. Now some people, some religious people get all offended by that. It was, it was humour. That wherever we went on away games, we used to take the city. I was in Paris in 1981, Liverpool to win the European Cup on one of the six occasions. Barney Rubble, I remember, scored the winner. What team would have Fred Flintstone's pal scoring the winner in a European Cup final? But it was at Liverpool. God bless them. And I remember the Parisians were all set up for a big fight. They had all these, didn't just have police, they had them with the machine guns and all the rest of us. <laughs> they're all set up for a big fight and what did they have to do they, 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 we played Real Madrid beat them that day and they saw the Spaniards and the Liverpool supporters getting on like a house on fire together you know why because of humour humour's a great thing and I remember one young man going to a well armed policeman with a big helmet on and just gave him a friendly tap. And he had a machine gun there. A, or machine, whatever these big guns look like. Tommy guns, whatever they're called. I'm not an expert on guns. 
We never used to carry them on the cop unless some kid came on with a cap gun or something in those days. But I'm telling you this, it was great fun because all the supporters got on together. There was humour. We knew we were going to win. It was inevitable we were going to win. Such was the quality of our team. And we picked up the European Cup. And I remember it all very well. And I remember getting help from a scouser to get to the stadium. He said, hey, la, at the Metro, like, just say, un stadium, do you know what you mean? I'm telling you something. There's something special about Liverpool Football Club. And it's a lot more than just the football. What it is, is the heart. And it's a heart to make friends with people all over the world. It's the international focus of the club, which is so important. It has an outreach of its own. And as an example for the church to have a global international outlook as well, not to look in on themselves, but to actually reach out and make friends with people of all cultures and backgrounds. It truly is a multiracial club. The people of all races are welcome on the Spy and Cup. Now, they're going to get the humour. They're going to get the banter. But they're also going to get that special welcome that comes with people who actually care and love one another. In the days when the cop was standing room only, there was a boy's pen in the corner. You know, I've still got some of the old... Pro Bear with me whilst I just come over here. I've got some of the old programmes here. This is the European Cup quarter-final programme. Second leg tie of Wednesday the 15th of March 1978. Guess who Liverpool was playing, Lindsay? One of the most famous clubs in the world. Bayern Munich? No, not Bayern Munich. Let me just get my, my handkerchief again. Okay. Uh, Inter Milan? No, no. <laughs> not Inter Milan. Benfica. Benfica. Let's see who was playing that day. Ray Clements, Phil Neal, Tommy Smith. You oh. know, Tommy Smith. You remember, Lindsay, the time when there was the uh, black rights protest at the Olympics with they were wearing black gloves yeah. and when they were getting medals. Well, we took this on in the cop. We started going on the cop with red gloves. And remember, they shouted the Olympics was black power. Remember that? Well, we, we changed all that to red power. Tommy ah. Smith. That's our chat. <laughs> God bless him. Phil Thompson, Ray Kennedy, and who did we call Crazy Horse? Emlyn Hughes, yeah. captain. Come on, without, come on within. You not see nothing like the mighty Emlyn we used to sing. Aww. There was Kenny Dalglish, Jimmy Case, Steve Highway, Ian Callaghan, and Terry McDermott. Team manager, Bob Paisley. Wow. It's all here. This, this, let me show it to you. There we are. I may be giving it over to Lindsay now. It's a very well battered copy. Wow. League Division 1. These are the programs that the games used to go to. You know how old I am now. 18th of April 1978. Kickoff 7.30. League Division 1. Liverpool versus Ipswich Town. Liverpool had the same team. John Walk was playing, which became a Liverpool player. And George Burley was playing for Ipswich. And they are Lindsay Apache, that one. And there's, oh, got one from the Football League Cup final of the 14th of March, 1981. Liverpool versus West Ham United. And, oh my goodness me, we go back 
this is the days when this was a, a more modern one, 1982, when it's, the Anfield Review started becoming into colour. Had Bruce Grabelar in goal, Mark Lawrenson was playing, Alan Hansen, Kenny Dalgleish, Sammy Lee, Ian Rush, and guess who was the captain? Graham Souness that day. And Joe Carrigan was playing for Manchester City and Asa Hartford and Dennis Stewart. Uh, Lindsay remembers all of them. And there's the team talk by Bob Paisley. And the club was wishing you all a happy Christmas. There you go. We could go through these all day. But to sum up our Coppite Church today, let's put these down over here. Oh, this is such a wonderful occasion. We have a Christ who died for us. By him were all things created. Without him there would be no Liverpool Football Club, no Premier League, no European history. And we need to thank him, we need to praise him. As Lindsay comes up just again, she's going to sing a lovely song because he lives. These are days without football, where there should be football. Mm. We should have had the Premier League by now. Come on up, Lindsay. Hard times. I remember somebody said, was that a Liverpool supporter? Said, that's on, just friend. the way it always is with Liverpool. We do things the hard way. Well, it's a hard we've been life. through so much yes. as a club. But there's a great heart, and they never give up, Lindsay. No. That was very evident with the dear families of the 96. I know. They never gave up, in spite of gross injustice and discouragement. This prophecy I received on the 2nd of May 2019, it's a special club mm. with a Christian history. It does not mean having a copyright church that those of other faiths will not be respected. It said, receive understanding of what the Coppite Church stands for. And indeed, the church has a unique perspective. This continues the prophecy of salvation only coming through the one sacrifice at the cross. The greatest act of love in history, and that love will be promoted to all peoples. The Coppite Church, and this is our vision, given direct from the Lord. We'll not be praying for Liverpool to win every game. That's wrong. Because that's a form of witchcraft, of control. What we will be doing is interceding for the right spiritual conditions once the season mm -hmm. gets going again. For good decisions, for good play. To be no longer a victim or of political and spiritual underlies that it can affect any sport at any time. Mm. There is a great heart at Liverpool Football Club. We've mentioned it. The loss of the 96 proves that continuously. And honouring martyrs is something the church can learn. Liverpool Football Club continuously talks of its martyrs. The church too has martyrs, which rarely get talked about. Those who've given their lives, like William Tyndale for the Bible, rarely gets talked about. Mm. Yet the 96, quite rightfully, were martyrs to the cause who are yes. continuously remembered and talked about. So dear, these dear Coppites, saith the Lord, have a major role. They have martyrs and on a landmark. So there is a biblical ethos already running through the club. What needs to happen now is an understanding of the last days. I was at the dentist the other day, Lindsay. And the dentist was using the term, all oh, this is apocalyptic. I already went for the filling, ended up with a wisdom tooth out. Because he's not allowed to do fillings and not allowed to do scaling and polishing. He's only check up and extraction. Go near him and he's going to get you. I tell you, it's like going in the Stretford End with the wrong scarf on. It was bad news going to the dentist that day. What needs to happen now is an understanding. 
that it's Christ who needs to have the preeminence. You mm. know, Lindsay and I was guilty of it myself. We worship the club before the creator of the mm. club. You know, there are people in art galleries who worship the painting rather than congratulate the painter. And so the Copyright Church is all about giving Christ the preeminence. You know, we know that we have been called to declare the victory of Christ Jesus, who never loses. This prophecy must have been given when Liverpool were defeated 3-0 at Barcelona. It says the defeat at Barcelona had underlies that could well have been dealt with in intercession. I believe this year the de defeat against Atletico Madrid had underlies to us. Now we will not be praying just like that, pray Liverpool wins. We will bring the conditions for justice and righteousness to prevail in matches. It said the Champions League final this year is due to be played at Madrid and we know full well what happened at Madrid. And should Barcelona reach the final, one can understand the political and spiritual significance of thousands of Catalonians entering the Spanish capital. So at that time, the whole Catalonia situation was on, wasn't it? It was. You know, I believe it was God's will that Liverpool went to Madrid rather than those from Catalonia. Mm -hmm. You see, football has spirituality at the back of us. And we will be praying for justice and fairness and honesty in our intercession. In future, the Copite Church will intercede to keep football matches in effect at a football level rather than the deep spiritual and political significances that football can become. For there is huge hurt in Catalonia. People voted to leave Spain as the people of Britain voted to leave the EU. And Spain, like many other European countries, are on the edge of civil war. Well, things have moved on now. The whole of Europe is collapsing. Mm. It hardly looks possible that the Champions League and Europa League can be seen through to a conclusion in the normal way this year. Italy is in bulk. Spain is in bulk. Yeah. People not even being allowed out. And our own nation now we are in a position where we have no clue when football is going to start again. Which is why there is only one assurance. And this assurance has a name. His name is Jesus. And this is God's time for the Copite Church. It is. Mm. And God is calling you to him through his beloved son. You know the Bible says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lindsay in our closing hymn, God sent his son, they called him Jesus, came to love, heal and forgive. And if you are a supporter of another team, you're so welcome to the Copite Church. You know, the Cop Lindsay is one of the few places you could go with an opposing team scarf. Oh, you're going to get teased like there's nothing on earth. But you're not going to get beaten up. You know, I remember the Celtic supporters at the Hillsborough match. There was a friendly game between Liverpool and Celtic for the victims 
of the those who gave their lives at Leppings Lane, Hillsborough. And I stood amongst the Celtic supporters with my red and white scarf. Liverpool won that game 4-0 at <laughs> Celtic Park. But the result wasn't important. It was the fact that football supporters could come together as one. And I'm looking forward to the day with the example of Liverpool Everton. Then in Glasgow, where you were born, Lindsay, mm. a Rangers supporter could go amongst the Celtic supporters at the same end of the ground. And yes, let's have the banter, let's have the fun, but let's not have the beaten up and the hatreds and the mm. strife. That's something the Coppite Church is standing against. The Bible says, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. You know, Lindsay, is one of the most anointed programs we've ever done. I know. And I tell you, the religious people, cop out church, will just look down at you. They look down at Jesus. They're called Pharisees and Sadducees. They look down at the Liverpool supporters as well. They do. That's what's been, that's such a hard time. Yeah. Yet they're real people. And God's not bothered about the sweary words and all the rest of it. He is if it's in using aggression against another. But he's not bothered about his everyday speech just to emphasize a point. It's the hatreds God doesn't like. It's the, but he also hates the bigotry. Because the ones who look religious have things to hide. Absolutely. The Coppites are open and transparent. They love their team. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, we need to love most of all the creator of our team. By Jesus mm. was all things created. And because of him, we have a team. And because of him, we can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Just say a few words, yes, Lindsay, folks, as I is... get the song ready. You know that that wonderful, wonderful hymn of the Copites, You'll Never Walk Alone, I sang at the beginning, and that is actually been a hymn, I believe, so I've read, that uh, it's all over Europe now, almost as a <laughs> anti-corona virus hymn. And this one, that I'm going to sing now because he lives, this gets rid of all fear because... That virus has been feeding on fear and feeding people's fear. But if we look to Jesus, and this hymn's all about that, this song's all about that, we have nothing to fear. It's called Because He Lives, and I Can Face Tomorrow. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died. Oh, he 
cares But greater still The calm assurance This child can face uncertain days Because he lives And then one day Find a war with pain And then as good Gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory And I'll know He lives Because Because